red light is always like, okay, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we are on. Woo woo. Yes, I see us. Yay. Let me just exit alpha here and we will get started. Okay. Hi, everyone. It is Eileen Carlucci here with the lovely, amazing Lisa Shapiro. And I'm going to tell you all about Lisa in a minute, but welcome, Lisa. Welcome. Thank you. And welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. And my name is Eileen, and I am the author of the upcoming book, Your New Life Starts Now. And I am a speaker, a stylist, and lifestyle design coach for women over 40. And a few weeks back, I'd say maybe a couple months back, I decided to start because I'm an entrepreneur and I think the world of female entrepreneurs, and I know what it takes to start a business and like, and make it successful, all the work and hard work it takes. And sometimes we want to give up along the way. So I thought, you know, just to share some inspirational stories, I started conversations with Eileen and every week on Wednesday at seven o'clock Eastern standard time. I have a, I interview a fabulous female woman in business, you know, that started her own business and they, she shares her an amazing journey and words of wisdom. And this week we have Lisa Shapiro, who I can't even tell you, she is the CEO and founder of DC Fempreneur, which is a group that I am in. It's an incredible group of women. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But it's been a true honor because Lisa is truly a leader of this group. And she's just like one of us too. Like she just is such a contribution to each one of our lives. And just to tell you a little bit about what D DC Fempreneur is, it provides opportunities for women entrepreneurs to collaborate, to network, share successful strategies, discuss challenges that we all face, Mm -hmm. and to help each other grow our businesses and expand our network throughout the DC area. Woo! -woo. <laughs> About it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Lisa, you know, FB, that being said, because I know you've started, you know, biz well, I'll let you share your story of your road to entrepreneurship, but tell us first, like how you kind of, you know, been redesigning your life and your entrepreneurial journey all these years, like share how you kind of oh, got goodness. started in all this. Yeah. Yeah, I... You know, it's funny, um, and I say this all the time, you know, entrepreneurship is not for everyone, and I think that's okay, but there's this certain level of hustle that we try not to glorify, but it is absolutely the case, and, you know, entrepreneurship is one of those things where it takes a lot out of you. It can be absolutely emotional draining, and, you know, when you're going through something emotionally or you're going through a life change, and, you know, speaking of redesigning your life, I probably have done it at least three, four times. You know, I'm 45 years old. Um, I've probably restarted at least three times. Most recently, um, I, I got divorced in, uh, in 2020 after, you know, a six and a half, seven year relationship, which was very, very difficult. And, you know, it's just one of those things where when you're in a relationship like that, that takes everything out of you. You question everything about yourself, oh. everything you've ever known about yourself to be true. You question, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're out there and you're nodding, you know, I completely empathize with all of you. It, it is one of those things that people talk about of being in a relationship where it's toxic and it's draining. Um, and when you come out of it, like I'm still coming out of it, it's been two years and I'm still redesigning my life and trying to get back to who I was, you know, um, yeah, I, I used to be that. this really, really proud person of, you know, I used to set goals all the time. I was very well known. And you know, this Eileen, yeah. very well known as being this goal setter and this really driven person. And when you're going through something like that and you're, you know, you're going out and you're, uh, you know, you need to, figure out like a new source of income because you're going through a life change. You need to, you know, you're changing jobs or you're, you need a new home. All of those things happened to me within a year's time. You know, I was going through the divorce, um, you know, with COVID, you know, DC Fempreneur, we were completely pivoting from doing in-person events, which was our strongest suit 
to doing all virtual events and nobody charges for virtual events because you don't have any expenses for virtual. Yeah. And so it took a full year to kind of get back to, you know, really getting back on our feet. It took a, a good six months. I would say August of 2020 is when we started to get back to seeing new memberships come in um, where we were able to kind of begin again to charge for our workshops and some of our events, even if they were online. And oh my gosh, it was a struggle. I, I mean, like a very typical entrepreneur. I mean, your mind just goes up and down, up and down. Oh, I need to go back to work. Oh, I need to, yeah. uh, I'm, this is going to fail. Like, oh no, yeah. you hear some incredible story from someone and it reaffirms what you should be doing. So you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's so true. You know, you're all over the place. Oh yeah. That is entrepreneurship. I am like that in a day, most days, just because that's the entrepreneur roller coaster. It's up it and is. it's down and there's no paycheck coming in unless you generate that money. And it's a scary right. place, but it's also extremely rewarding. And when we get to contribute to people's lives, that's really what it's all about. But I agree. But um, yeah, no, and really, I really acknowledge you for all you've been through, Lisa, because I know going through a divorce, you know, having a move and, you know, in 2020, in the middle of COVID and running a business and contributing to all the women that you do, like that is huge because I've been through a divorce. I didn't have to do a whole, I mean, eventually I got into starting a business, but that was years later. Um, so really, I, you're a really amazing and, and I know it's not easy, but, um, but you did it and you're still redesigning your life and that's okay. We, you're continuing to elevate and uh, create new things. So I think you're amazing. So, yeah, so let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about your journey of entrepreneurship. Like you started at 18 and then where you are now with DC Fempreneur. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, and I've, I've said this before. Um, you know, many times where I have a very strong belief that entrepreneurship is innate. It's not something that you can learn. And, you know, there is, you know, you can see the, the degrees on my wall, right? So I have a bachelor's and a master's in psychology. So I believe really strong in, in data and research. And the research absolutely does show that there is a place in the brain that illuminates when someone sees an opportunity and they are able to respond to it. And that is essentially, you know, that little part of our brain um, that defines the entrepreneurship spirit. You know, there's two types of people, who, somebody who sees an opportunity and thinks that would be great for someone else. Gosh, that would be great if someone else did, or if we had another person who thinks to themselves, oh my gosh, where can I find someone to help me do this? Or I want to do that. And they dig into it immediately. I mean, the, the, there is no in between. Yeah. You either, you know, it keeps, it, you're like in a musician almost. And uh, when you're an entrepreneur where you stay up at night thinking about how you're going to bring that mm -hmm. idea to market or how you're going to make that happen. And, um, you know, Sometimes I did start by that. yourself too. You're a solopreneur as they call it. I mean, we always yeah, have to help. It's a very lonely process it is. You know, yeah. to do things yeah. by yourself. And it is. It is. I totally started my first business when I was 18. Uh, I was still in high school. I saw an opportunity, you know, when the pager world boomed, um, I'm totally aging myself. I already said I was 45. It's so sad. Hey, I'm older than you. So you're yeah, young. Right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I saw an opportunity to be a reseller for pager services and um, I made a lot of money. I mean, I was just a kid in high school and uh, it was a neat experience. And um, I learned a lot about it. And of course, I, I was a little budding marketer even back then. And I think that was my strong suit. And then, you know, fast forward to, let's say maybe 2009, 2010, I started a business, uh, a media company with uh, three other blogger friends of mine. Um, when I was doing uh, dining in DC, it was called Four Bitten Media. And it was really a cool experience. And I was able to, you know, change sides of the table, change sides of the table. Instead of being the food writer, I ended up being the marketing person where I was actually working with the restaurant owners. And that was really fun. Wow. And, uh, I sold that. I sold my share of that when I sold my, my company. Um, and that was my very first exit. Um, and, you know, in, in lean startup methodology, which is something that I've learned uh, along my, my journey, um, you know, working with the Virginia Small Business Development Center, which is my full-time job, um, 
you know, entrepreneurship is, you know, people think like, oh, you know, uh, so your business is something you're going to hold on to forever. Um, it's not, you're not really supposed to, you're yeah. supposed to plan, you know, you're supposed to plan when you you are going to exit and preferably at a point when your business is on a high and yeah. someone else can, you know, acquire it, or there's uh, technology or there's data worth, worth something to someone. And you're going to pass that on and then you move on to the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, and that, that is kind of where I am with DC Fempreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, I am in the process of, of working on a merger with another community that will be taking over a lot of the DC membership, the DC Fempreneur uh, membership side. Um, the community okay. may still stay active in a way. Um, but the membership portion of DC Fempreneur will merge with another community. Okay. And um, all of that is going to be announced like in a week or in a week or two. So if you're watching this, uh, spoiler alert, right? Um, this is that's coming. exciting. Yeah. And so uh, tell us. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, tell, uh, say yeah, again. tell us about DC Fempreneur so people understand like what it is. And oh, sure. Know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I started DC Fempreneur in January of 2019 because what was happening is I had this desire of, um, I had a new business idea, but I couldn't find a community of other female entrepreneurs that were really driven to share a knowledge and skills and, uh, you know, really want to grow a business. What I found in, in my community, because I live in the Fairfax County area, just outside DC, um, what I found was a lot of groups for, for mothers who need like downtime and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's great. There's a place for that, but that's not what I was looking for. What mm -hmm. I was looking for was what DC Fempreneur is, is a community of professional um, entrepreneurs, women who really view themselves as an entrepreneur first. Yes, we're mothers, some of us, right? But really how we define the way that we think and, and the ambitions that we have is we feel like there's a greater purpose for what we really want to do. Um, and I think that, you know, there is that term mompreneur and then, you know, I, I use fempreneur all the time and those are great, yeah. but I didn't find what I was looking for. And so like a true entrepreneur, right? I, when I didn't find what I was looking for, I created it myself. And it took me actually two years to be convinced. I didn't want to. <laughs> I was hoping to find find something else out there that I could be a part of and and uh, contribute to and learn. I just wanted something I could I could learn from, um, yeah. but I didn't find it. And so I decided to create it. And uh, it was very unique, I think, to create something and have really good quality female business owners come behind me and have my back on this vision. And I mean, they didn't really know me. DC Fempreneur didn't have a mission statement back then. We didn't have, you know, um, we didn't have all the members that we have now, you know? And so they really were buying into this idea of building this community along with me. And I'm very thankful for those original founding members. Um, yeah. You know, some of them are still with us. It's been three years and you know, it wouldn't have been possible if I wouldn't have had these key people who said to me, Lisa, you absolutely should do this. Um, you know, you can do it. And when you do, I'm going to be a part of it. And that, that really, I think, changed my mind about um, that there was, uh, it was a feasible and viable business idea because people were like, yes, I would, I would join this if there, if this existed. Right, right. So, and you have the DC Fempreneur, where you have, it's more of a free networking, and then you have the membership, right? So can you just tell us the difference? Like, you know, how, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we have, you know, a community is a place, a safe place where you can, um, you know, get together with other people. In, and I talk a lot about sharing and knowledge and skills. This is a perfect example. So let's say I'm a business owner and I want to create a platform like this where I can interview other business owners, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody would be, you would not be upset if someone came to you and said, Eileen, I saw your live. I yeah. want to do something like that in my community. Can you help me? Can you tell me what you did to set it up? You're not going to tell them no. You're yeah. going to tell them what you did, right? Because somebody helped you along your way. 
right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what the community aspect of it is for, is that we're, we're helping out other people that maybe they're just getting started on their journey and, and we've learned something along the way. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was, I didn't really understand the, the, the behind the scenes business aspect of growing the business. I was a professional marketer. I could build a website from a black screen, but what I lacked was the behind the scenes strategy and business skills, outlining where I wanted to be in a year, five years, 10 years, what it would look like. And so I had to have people provide me templates and walk me through those things. Mm -hmm. um, but if I didn't have access to those people, I would have been scrambling around and I wouldn't be, I mean, like you could ask me to see, you could ask to see that document. I could pull it up right now. Right, right. But if I didn't know that was needed, right? And if someone didn't say to me, oh, well, Lisa, what you need is a business plan or what you need is a, a business, you know, uh, canvas, mm -hmm. I, you know, I wouldn't know. And I, I yeah. think that's one of the power, the one of the, the strengths behind being a part of a community is even if you say nothing, you're absorbing, one, you're absorbing the energy of these people in the community. Um, and just by, by being a part and active, you are going to pick up on what people are doing, what has worked for other people. And hopefully you come forward and, and feel comfortable in saying, hey, I have some ideas. Um, this is what I could really use. And I mean, in our Facebook group, there's at least 1,500, you know, local within the DC area, female entrepreneurs that on a daily basis are saying, I need this. I have a question about this. Who do you know that can help me with this? Dozens of posts a day. Like I'm moderating those posts all day and I love it that people feel comfortable that they can post um, or they, they can ask their questions there and know that they're going to be supported there. Yes. No, that's so, I mean, I love the community too. It's just amazing how, you know, women can do that. We just, cause we're all dealing with stuff all day long and, and other, and people can help each other. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, even like you said, even if you don't say anything, you're learning. Right. So yeah, you are. Yeah. So you have the one community, then the membership, mm -hmm. which I know you you can't say too much, but it's going to be a little broader, maybe even a bigger, right? Kind of merge. Yeah, so for right now, I mean, the membership, um, it was really kind of cool that we um, thought of this so easily. But, you know, in March of 2020 with COVID, um, I essentially froze all of the membership payments that were coming in. Uh, it was the least thing, you know, the, it was the least I could do to support, you know, our members. And I think we had maybe 75 at the time. And um, so, you know, we froze everyone's memberships and I, and I created what I call an eFab membership. So our, our level of membership is called a Fempreneur Advocate Business Member, FAB. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just, you know, when I say member, I mean, this is a female who has a business, a small business, uh, and they're a member of our membership organization. And we had about 75 members at the time. And then in March of 2020, um, I decided that if we weren't going to be hosting in-person events, that it didn't matter if you were within the DC area, you could be a part of the, the membership portion of it um, without having to pay an annual membership. It became really, really easy. It's $15 a month to join and have unlimited access to all the benefits of being a member of the community, which at the time, opened up to everything, to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really a neat experience. I mean, we, I, be, I feel like I, I got to know people, you know, on the Eastern shore of Maryland and all the way down, you know, in, in Southern Virginia that we would have never met in, in regular events. Yeah. You know, That's like so people true. were coming to things um, and we were expanding our network at, you know, 10 times the capacity we would have if we were doing those in-person events. And uh, I think that was really powerful. And so technically we still have that EFAB membership where you can join, you know, and pay month to month. Yeah. Um, but most of our memberships are annual memberships where you join, you pay dues for a year and, um, you know, you're a member for a full year, but right. the EFAB membership, um, you know, we created in, in March, 2020, and it's still there. It's, it's designed for someone to come in and say, Hey, I want to take a look and, and see if this, if the people in this community are for me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm really laid back about it. I'll meet somebody and, and I'll, I say, you know, I don't say to them like, oh, you, you need to join as a member. I say, look at our calendar on our, our website, 
take a look to see what's coming up and, and, you know, check it out. See if these are the kind of people that, um, that you align yourself with. I mean, there's a place for everyone and DC Fempreneur is not for everyone. Yeah. Um, and there are plenty of other communities, um, for entrepreneurs out there. We're, we're just one. Right. Exactly. So how is it like, tell us now that you're back to work full time, Mm -hmm. because there may be people out there that want to start a business or trying to do the same thing, working full time with keep, because, you know, now we've all had more time to be home and a lot of people have started businesses. So how do you manage that? And you're a mom of two kids, a single mom of two kids. So how do you do all that? Give us some tips. I do not know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, People ask me that all the time. So, you know, I went out and. Um, So I work full time for the Virginia Small Business Development Center. I run a program, a state level program called the Innovation Commercialization Assistance Program. It's called ICAP. Mm -hmm. And it is designed to help commercialize technology startups. So let's say there's a a person out there. We have plenty of females who come in through ICAP um, who has an innovative technology and they're just getting started in their business and they want to commercialize their innovation, meaning they want to scale and grow. And Mm -hmm. so this state level program helps them do that. And I I run the whole program for the state and I love my work. Go girl. Yes. (laughs) That's Um, awesome. I mean, I started part-time in October of 2020, thinking it was going to be this little part-time job, a couple hours a day, a couple hours a week. And I would really focus on DC Fempreneur. What happened was I came in Mm-hmm. and exposed to an entire new level of the entrepreneur ecosystem. And I just totally drank it in. Uh, these wow. people are amazing. I mean, mm. we've worked with, you know, uh, I've only been with the program since October, 2020, but ICAP has seen, you know, more than 700 startups to this program in the last three years and helped these companies raise more than $55 million in their businesses. And so it is so inspiring. So only in in last month uh, did my position go full time. And that was made possible because we had that big boom, right? That great resignation through COVID. Yeah. What came out of that, a silver lining that came out of that is people decided, you know what? Life is short and I want to start my business. I want to foresee my dream. Yes. And um, it's amazing to be a part of that. So I, I feel torn a little bit. I am taking a step back from DC Fempreneur because I have to. Yeah. But I'm still absolutely, um, you know, sticking to the mission of supporting the entrepreneur ecosystem. Yeah. I'm just also working with the other 50% of the population this time uh, because, there, you know, there are men and women in ICAP, whereas with DC yeah. Fempreneur, it's only females. Female, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I really love my work and I've met amazing, amazing people. And, um, you know, one of the benefits of being a full-time employee, you know, on a state level is I have incredible benefits and I have this, you know, itch to go back and get a PhD and really think about, uh, you know, what I want to do in the next five years. And, um, I don't know if I want to start a new business, you know, in the next five years, who knows, you know, right. But yeah, hey, um, you know what? There's tons of opportunity out there, right? But what does Tony Robbins has like 105 businesses? I mean, I know he has a lot really? of teams, but why not, right? Why don't we just have to have one business, one job? Why not several? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Multiple streams of income is where it's at. Okay. Multiple streams. I, I've actually, I'm creating that in my year, multiple streams of income. Same thing. Yeah, absolutely. We can have it all now. We really can. can Life is definitely, we can, we can. I see Marie watching. Hey, Marie. Hi, Marie. I don't know where she went, but um, sometimes it's hard to see who's watching because you can't always see. So yeah, that's okay. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so anything else you want to add? I definitely want to get a couple words of wisdom from you, but anything else you want to say about, yeah. you know, how to find out about your, you know, what you do in your job, as well as the, um, DC Fempreneur, how people could find out about that or get more information. Yeah, um, well, DC Fempreneur has a website, okay. um, it's a little bit hard to spell, um, okay. but it's, I'll share it. I will share okay. it. Yeah. The DC okay. Fempreneur website. And it's, okay. you know, all the membership information is there. There's a directory of all the members who are part of DC Fempreneur. If anything, even if you're not a female entrepreneur, if you're looking for um, a place to look to where you could 
network with other female entrepreneurs, uh, check out the member directory. Yes. Um, yes. We also have something on our website called the, um, the shop small guide, okay. which was really, uh, originally designed for the holidays, but all of those links and descriptions still are viable. Um, it's really, um, a guide of like a hundred different local female businesses that have, um, that have services and products to offer. Yeah. Um, most of those businesses are not members. It's just a guide that I really am proud of that we put together. Um, and then for the, for the ICAP program, um, it's, you go to the Virginia Small Business Development Center website. So I think it's VASBDC.org. VASBC.org. So uh, VASBDC, okay. which is Small Business Development Center.org. So VASBDC. I'll share that link as well. Yeah. And um, I guess the, the last thing I want to say about my entrepreneur journey is I really thought I was creating the community to help others. And mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah. I think what came out of it is it changed my life. And I didn't really think I, I was I wasn't expecting that. You know, I made yeah. I made good friends and I, I had real impact in, in people's lives, um, which is a dream. You know, everybody says that they want to um, make, you know, they want to have purpose in what they do and their time on earth. And, you know, I, I just, I go through and I see somebody post something random on Facebook or on LinkedIn. And I look at all the comments on that, on that post. And so many of them are people that they met through DC Fempreneur. Wow. And wow. it makes me so, so happy. You know, I'll go into a group um, like Jen Hocutt, you know, in, in the goals and growth group and yeah. I'll go into her group. And a lot of times the people that she has speaking in her group are people that she met through DC Fempreneur. And it, it really renews how excited I am about the community and what we've done. Um, you know, and I'm just really glad that yes, yes, I'm the founder of it, but I also am really great, grateful. I was able to be a part of it you know, um, yeah. to meet all these amazing people and, um, you know, people like Tina Unruh who really, really supported me, um, during my divorce. I mean, I was a mess and she took so much time out of her day to talk to me and to wow. coach me through that. And I mean, you know what it's like to work with divorce. Oh people. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. I've been through a divorce too. And I was a <laughs> mess too. I'll tell you for like, a year, I didn't know what I was doing, if I was coming or going, but so, and it takes a while. It took me, it does take years to get your life together again. Uh, people say about divorce, it's the easy way out. There is nothing easy about it. Not one thing. Yeah, that oh, that's it like one of those like myths easy. or whatever, you know, especially the, with children in the, exactly, it, exactly. Yeah. It's not the easy way out. Yeah. But I really want to say how much I've enjoyed being in DC Fempreneur. Your events were spectacular. Always. Anytime I've gone to an event these past few years, incredible. I've met such incredible women, you're such an inspiration. I love the team that you have around you. I mean, everyone steps in and really it's just, you're such a contribution. You know, I just, you're, you're so passionate Thank about you. what you do and, you know, being an entrepreneur and wanting to make a difference in the world. Like you just have that desire, you know, so. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. And then what you're doing now is your job sounds incredible. Really I wish I you all the best with that new job. Good for you. Full-time job now. Um, yeah. So any, so in closing, any words of wisdom you want to leave us with? Yes, I have some. And, and, you know, if you had asked me six months ago, I would have said something different, but okay. these are my words of wisdom is sure. when you're starting your business, you, you know, you bite off more than you can chew. You think that you want to do all of the things you need to have the website and the e-newsletter, and then you need to start a podcast and you need to develop this, this, and this. And, I think the idea of, you know, doing all of the things is to pick one thing, do it really, really well, and then expand into other things once that has really gotten off the ground. And yeah. I, I, I feel like, you know, I made the mistake in DC Fempreneur, you know, um, in the past three years, I designed the community to have a body of leadership where there would be people that did events without me and there would be um, things in place that would, you know, we do have a, a lot of automation in the business behind that, 
but there isn't a team working when I'm not. And so my real words of wisdom to everyone is very early on in your business, cre create standard operating procedures and really put mechanisms in place so that your business is continuing to work when you're not. Yeah. And so when you need to take a step back, maybe it's for family, maybe it's for uh, family members that become ill, or maybe you become ill, or maybe there's another opportunity or something happens where you just can't put your full 100% into your business, you still want to be able to continue to receive that income and you still want to be able to grow and scale that business, but without you having to be the, the driver behind that business. So if you've learned any, if you take away anything from what I say, mm -hmm. um, learn from my mistake in that you really do need to create um, mechanisms in your business so that your business can operate um, on its own with or without you. And right. I did not, I did not do that. And so working full time, there's so many things in, in that's happening in my business that will not be able to continue because even though I, in, in its inception, mm -hmm. I created a body of leadership, but in the past three years, um, you know, everyone's focus has changed and, you know, COVID was a big part of that. Nobody could have seen that coming. Yeah. Um, but you know, we learn. And yeah. so I think that is really, I think my lesson learned about, um, you know, not listening to what a lot of experts say is hire a team member before you think that you're ready, oh, hire yeah. someone to work with you. Even if you think you can't afford it yet, do it because- yeah they are the person that are going to keep things going when you can. Right. That is so true because you can't be, you know, there's so much to do in one business. You can't be the jack of all trades in your business. It's just, we try. Uh, yeah. It's too hard. It's, <laughs> it wears you out. It wears you out. And that is so smart. That is amazing. Like to have your teamwork, your structures, all of that. Yeah. You have to have all so that. amazing. Thank you for sharing that really. Uh, <laughs> and for all of you out there, you know, like, you can work and have a business and have it all. Lisa's doing it. I mean, it's not easy, but she's, you know, she's an entrepreneur and, and a working person. That's really incredible. So, yeah, yeah my son is, uh, we're getting ready. I mean, he's applied to colleges. He's been accepted to a few different places and mm -hmm. you know, we're getting ready to go on those tours. And it's just crazy, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, being a mom is a full-time job in itself. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. businesses are, it's just one of those things where I can't imagine having young children, you know, Eileen and yeah. I have relatively, you know, you definitely have yeah, minor grown. Yeah. 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 I mean, my son actually turns uh, 18 um, on Monday next week. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, Happy birthday. Thank you. But I mean, he still lives at home, so he's not yeah. quite, he's not yeah, quite he's almost yet, there. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. but it is something I think that um, we overlook a lot is yeah. how much of you is, you know, you put into the things in your life, including your children, your family, your relationships, your marriage, your mm -hmm. business. And yeah. you have to set up these things so that either one is not being, you know, tipped over. Right. Because you're putting more of yourself in one or the other. It's hard. It's really hard. The it's balance like skill that I think, you know, yeah. it's very difficult, I think, to achieve that balance. But, um, yeah. Get your help. Community, I think, really helps you. Yeah, yes. Well, thank you so much for being my guest thank tonight you. and sharing your words of wisdom and your story with us. We so appreciate you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Lisa. you, everyone, for having me. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining in. I'm sorry if I didn't say hello. You can't always see who's there. I can't see. So, but if you, whoever joined in, thank you. And on the replay, thanks for joining in. Have a great night, all. Bye. Bye, thank you, Bye Lisa. Thank you.